Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. And uh, we'll we'll talk about the new year when that comes around. But uh, it's uh, that time of year. You know, I'm always a sentimental guy, but right around this time of year, I go uh, whole hog. And so does Jim. And I uh, thank you for the decorations, sir. I just want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a happy holiday season. And uh, well, I, this time of year gets me excited, you know, for for all sorts of things. And uh, new knives are one of them. So before we uh, before we jump into the uh, opening uh pocket check. I just want to say that what we have coming up is this. We have three new Civivis in my collection coming up. We have CJRB taking fan input to complete their latest design, which actually looks very cool. And then we talk about red handled knives. Very specific, I know, but I realized recently that's what I've been trying to get. Whenever there's the option for a dark red or maroon colored handle, even even regular red I'm going for, uh, I buy it. And it's unusual for me. I like I, ne I never thought that would be the thing. It was my high school color. Uh, I was a rebellious kid. And uh, I guess now I'm back. All things in circles, I guess. Uh, anyway, let's get to a pocket check before I start waxing philosophical. Okay, what am I carrying today? I'm, I'm carrying a, uh, a double blade show kind of, uh, well, one of them I got from Blade Show and the other one I got to show off at Blade Show. So anyway, uh, the first one is the Spartan Harzy folder. And this one is a plain Jane. As, as you can see, it's all just that plain titanium. But what is that? Yes, that's my logo. You've seen this knife. I show it off whenever I have the opportunity. And uh, uh, I got some personal notes there <laughs> on my hand. Uh, but uh, this has the Knife Junkie logo etched, laser etched in it, and also in the filler tab here uh, uh, for the pocket clip on the left side, which, if you ask me, is unnecessary because we need not accommodate for lefties. Uh, just make lefty knives is, is what I say, but I guess maybe that's, uh, that's a, a, a fiscal um, uh, consideration that I have no idea about because I'm not a knife business owner. But anyway, one of my favorite knives of all time, not just because it has this logo etched in here, but because it takes <clears throat> a lot of what I love about the Hinderer XM series. And then a lot of what I love about the Chris Reeve knives, knives, and kind of puts them into one. It is the most solid, uh, one of of its kind i think and um you know it really does rival the the chris reeve and the hinderer uh and i think because it's got the two full titanium slabs without weight reduction it actually feels more solid than a hinderer and this is an obviously in no way me dissing hinderer i love them ever so much uh but this thing is also uh there's no lock bar insert they don't need it they worked it out and it's super smooth, no lock stick, super smooth. It's got that classic hydraulic feel. And, well, what do you know? It's also a great knife. It cuts very well. It does have a pretty thick behind the edge me measurement. And what that measurement is, uh, I don't, actually, <laughs> I don't know, but I could tell you if I could read these calipers. Uh, it's pretty thick. But, uh, let's see. What is that? 20 two thousandths behind the edge. It's pretty thick behind the edge, but it's very sharp. So this is that, uh, you know, the definition of a robust knife. I have a lot of uh, knives I've been really into recently, like these Civivis. Here's the, uh, the um, what is this? The Mallory designed one, the, um, sorry, can't remember it, but it's got a super thin hollow grind. That's also very appealing to me because it just glides through materials uh, but it can't go the distance in terms of hard use, which this obviously can, uh, but also with class and panache. And I got to say, uh, William Harsey's designs are beautiful. I say that all the time. I could I could identify them uh, in a lineup no matter what. He's got a definite design style, and I love it. So today, that's long for I'm carrying the Spartan Harsey folder in my right pocket. 
And then tucked in my waistband, I have, as usual, a fixed blade. Uh, but today I have the Dylan Grace Blade Company. That's DG Blade Co. Uh, this is a Warney scalpel I picked up from him. I picked up. I hate that. I hate when people, knife people say, I picked up this knife. But I bought this knife from him at Blade Show. And it was a great honor because I had been following him for a long time and really admiring his work. And then when I saw him sitting there with this table full of these beautiful knives, uh, I couldn't resist. Uh, as you can see, I haven't unsheathed this knife yet because the sheath is a major player. He does these, I mean, it's a multi-step process to get a sheath like this. It's a leather sheath. It's folded over like a taco style Kydex sheath, and it has retention like Kydex. Let's see. I'm going to put it up to my microphone over here so you can hear it's, uh, it snaps in. You hear that? Sounds just like Kydex, but it's leather. And so he managed to do something really cool, which is come up with this process. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people make formed leather sheaths, and and but the way this snaps in, it is very much like uh, it has that retention of Kydex. You can hold it upside down and shake it all day long, and it's not coming out, and it doesn't rattle. So uh, Dylan uh, of DG Blade Co. has really figured out a great sheathing system, especially for those of us who love leather as a material. All right, so removing it, uh, we have a, a Warncliffe-style sort of scalpel blade. So the handle is about two and a half times the size of the blade. That blade is two inches uh, of cutting length with a nice uh, choil here and great jimping on top. And this is just a fantastic utility blade. I mean, that's what it's for, really. Look at it. It's a great uh, pull cut utility cut draw cut kind of opening boxes all day long knife but you'll you'll be doing it in full class look at this this uh, dressed up handle this is contoured buckeye burl so this is buckeye burl wood and then the places where you see the color uh, those are voids in the burl so that's filled in with a nice uh you know beautiful colored epoxy swirly resin thing and it makes for just a gorgeous handle. I grew up in Ohio. That's the Buckeye State. So uh, I picked this. I was like, this is this is the one I have to get. And then he told me what the material was. So it was meant to be, I swear. Uh, but this is great, uh, a great knife, great utility carry, uh, and easily carried if you are interested in fixed blade utility, you know, EDC. This is a great knife for that. It's light, thin. That's forged 01 tool steel. Um, and just, you know, one of a kind, uh, I wear it three o'clock position in the waistband and, uh, you can draw it out and use it like this, or, you know, of course, I'm always thinking about it here. Let's go to this camera. I always think about it in terms of what if I needed to use it for self-defense, which, you know, never comes up, but, uh, you could draw it like this and have a, a really, uh, comfortable, well-positioned pick hall style self-defense tool if you needed it. Anyway, so let's look at it right next to the um, Spartan Harzi. You can see the the size. It is quite small, so very easy for in-pocket uh, EDC fixed blade carry. So this is what I got today. Spartan Harzi folder, such a nice piece, and this custom Dylan, uh, Dylan Grace Blade Company Warney scalpel all right coming up on the knife junkie podcast we're gonna check out uh the new terrain 365 cayman and we'll take a look at cjrb and then uh, downstream we'll take a look at new civivis and some red handled knives but first uh, if you think what we do here is worth it go to patreon there are ways to support the show everything from three dollars a month to ten dollars a month if you're at uh, ten dollars a month that's the gentleman junkie le uh, level you are entered into a monthly giveaway for a knife uh this knife uh we just gave away to a uh, patron john ladner uh this past thursday uh night we gave him one of these not this one this one is mine uh but this is the civivi cogent so every month we give away a knife there and or we do it on thursday night knives the third thursday but it's always something it's a knife that's either been um carefully curated from donated knives um or uh, a knife that I'm just into, like the Cogent this time. I just got it and gave it away, a purple and black one. So please uh, 
take a look at what we have on Patreon. We have interview extras and a lot of other stuff too. So uh, all of that is coming up next, but you can go and check this all out at thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, I'm going to remind you, it's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Now in its 42nd edition, Knives 2022 is the annual showcase of the most remarkable custom and factory manufactured knives in one remarkable collection. Get your copy today at thenifejunkie.com slash knives 2022. Terrain 365 has a new knife out, and uh, <laughs> Jim, I like that. I like that snowman. Uh, so Terrain 365, that's Patrick Ma. That's his company. Now, Patrick Ma is one of the one of the founders of Triple Lot Design and Prometheus Blade Works. Uh, that those are his companies. Well, uh, uh, he's he's uh, away from Triple Lot now, but he has Prometheus and Terrain 365. Terrain 365 is known for their knives. Uh, that are completely waterproof. They use a lot of titanium in terms of hardware and handle material. And then they have this um, uh, a proprietary cobalt alloy called Teravantium, uh, which is their blade material that they use in a lot of these knives. And they're all um, rust proof, you know, corrosion resistant completely. Uh, so that's Terrain 365's USP. They have a new knife out and it's kind of riding on the heels of the Otter. The Otter was a spear point Barlow with the same exact handle we see here with one change. I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, but instead of the spear point blade, they've replaced it with a classic clip point blade. So this really looks like a Barlow because when I think of a Barlow, I think of a clip point blade. That, that's not to say they didn't make Barlow's uh, classically uh, styled Barlow's and other blade styles, but mostly we know them as clip points. So to me, this is a real, uh, well, it's a real beautiful, modern, super ultra modern expression of the Barlow design. The, the, the whole thing about the Barlow was that it had a very long uh, bolster and that very long bolster married with a pretty long blade tang, uh, uh, really lent itself to lateral strength and just strength overall for a slip joint knife. That's why the Barlow was, was made for working men. It was a working man's knife. And um, here we are in the full titanium scale environment. We don't need those bolsters. The whole damn thing is a bolster basically, but it retains that sleeve board shape to the handle sleeve board uh, referring to the old uh, sleeve board on the ironing board uh, that would come down from your grandma's, uh, uh, ironing board in their kitchen. It came down and there was a sleeve board for ironing sleeves. Uh, same shape. But this uh, Teravantium clip point blade has uh, two long machine pulls. And uh, the one the one difference between this and the Otter is that uh, the Otter has a bail for the lanyard instead of a hidden uh, lanyard post, which is what this is. Now, that hidden lanyard post is a very modern touch a lot of people don't like lanyard holes period and i would imagine a lot of people like bristle at a bail which is an extra thing on the knife as opposed to a hole in the knife so uh the hidden um lanyard post is an elegant solution everyone gets what they want uh the non-lanyard people have an area of the knife that that is not uh, a fouled by a hole or a bail and the people who like lanyards can attach them uh so that's the one main difference. Uh, Patrick Ma doing really cool stuff always. And here with uh, Terrain 365 and their Teravantium uh, cobalt alloy in this new Barlow. Very cool. It's called the Cayman. Okay. So the first one is the Otter, which is kind of a lovable weasel, aquatic weasel, right? Uh, and this is the Cayman, which is kind of a small crocodilian and a small crocodile that lives in South America and maybe elsewhere. Mm. Look at that. That is a beautiful knife. And there is the, uh, if you go back to that last picture, uh, Jim, there is the hidden lanyard post we're talking about. So uh, those who want it can use it. Those who don't can ignore it. And then Jim, go to the uh, next one, if you would, please. In the next picture here, you can see a nice little run of jimping which you don't see often on slip joint knives. It reminds me a little bit of the Benchmade proper. Uh, has that little run of jimping. And this kind of looks like the proper clip point shape. I got to say, um, I'm this is totally unfiltered and honest. Um, I love clip points, and that's a pretty nice one. But um, there is a whole galaxy of really cool clip point shapes uh, that I've seen in in slip joints that, I don't know, 
I don't know. I'd like to see a little more interesting blade there, but that's me picking nits. And I don't know. I, I guess I could have kept that to myself. Next up, CJRB uh, looks to fans to refine their design. So they have a new one out and it looks, well, it's somewhat similar to a recent uh, cleaver style blade that they put out. What the heck was that one called? Um, hmm. Well, oh, the Tigris. That's right. It looks a bit like the Tigris, but they've kind of st- um altered the front end so that it's a it's a less steep angle to that point they've moved the point up given it a bit more belly and made it something so that okay you could you could pierce with this easily you could open up clamshell packages or stab it into organic material or whatever more easily with that point um but there's a lot of style on it you know look at that little dip at the top that's evocative of a straight razor to me You've got that handle that's sort of a pistol grip handle. There's a crook, that uh, downward crook that happens shortly after the forefinger choil there. And what that does is puts the point in the right place for uh, uh, draw cutting, utility cutting, and for puncturing so that you don't have to cant your wrist in a in a way to get the point where you need it to be. So that's that's what that pistol grip style is all about. But they're sort of uh, coming in. They want to present this prototype at SHOT Show. This is, this is, these are just drawings you're seeing here, basically, um, or 3D renderings. Uh, so they want to show the prototype off at SHOT Show. And to, and to bring them into the station, they're asking uh, fans to come up with a name. They're getting scads of names. They haven't come near selecting one. But they've also been asking for some design features. And one of the main design features uh, that we've gotten from fans in this new CJRB uh, heretofore unnamed knife is that beautiful lozenge-shaped large opening hole. Uh, I can't believe it wasn't in the original design. If you uh, scroll down this article, you can see what it looked like before uh, fan input, and it, it really makes a difference. You know, you you get some really great engineers at CJRB, and then you get some super knife nerds out there. You bring them together, and you get the right knife. This is cool. But you add that second opening method uh, with that nice big opening hole and you can slow roll it because this is a <clears throat> liner lock. Uh, you can f- uh, thumb flip it. You can middle finger flick it or you could use the damn uh, uh, blade. And it looks I mean, I mean, the flipper tab. It also looks like that blade is broad enough that on some blades you can just put your finger on the blade and and just push and get it to flick open. So, I mean, this. This is a cool design. It looks like a very stylish, very utilitarian design. But with the fan input, it's really made it, um, I think, a really excellent knife. And and that and that excellent looking, let me say, I haven't touched it. No one has. But uh, with that giant uh, opening hole, it seems like the design has finally entered the station gee whiz man that was a that was a lot of words that was a word salad to say i like the new cjrb using fan input but i mean we find this over and over again in the interview shows when people go from knife collector knife fan knife lover enthusiast to knife maker knife designer we get some really excellent knives that seem custom made for us even though they're production knives or small run production knives. They seem custom made for us knife lovers because they come from the minds of knife lovers, not just product engineers, product designers who work at a knife company. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at my state of the collection. That includes two, uh, three new Civivis. I, I had a windfall and I'll tell you all about that. A new Gerber, which has been a shock and a surprise, pleasant. Uh, and my red handled knives. There's a bunch of them and I'll go quickly through them. Uh, but I just realized, uh, there's a pattern forming here. Uh, once is a fluke twice could be a fluke three times. It's a pattern 15 times. It's an illness. All right. All that coming up on the knife junkie podcast. And now that we're caught up with knife life news, let's hear more of the knife junkie podcast. Good guy who shows up to uh, Thursday Night Knives on the regular Blade Hobby. Cheers, Blade Hobby. Thank you, sir. Uh, He posted something on Blade Forums. Every once in a while, I'll do this. I'll be like, I'm going to go on Blade Forums. And if I see 
and I'll list off a knife in my mind. I will buy it if it's a good deal. I've been thinking that about the, oh no, oh my God. All right, I left it upstairs. Dag nabbit. Uh, I had all my other Civivis here. Anyway, I've been thinking about the, the, <laughs> the riffle. I'm such an idiot. All right, well, if you're listening, you can't tell the difference. Uh, this could be the riffle right here. But I assure you, if you're watching, it is not. Uh, but I got two knives from Blade Hobby. He posted for a very excellent price. The Brazen, which we covered on this show almost a year ago. Uh, that's this knife. And then the Riffle, which is a knife I've been so interested and curious about. And I've been carrying it around so much that I left it somewhere else. But we'll look at it at another time. This is the Civivi um, Brazen. and so I got this and the riffle for the price of just this. So I had to get it. But when this first came out, uh, I remember talking about it and reading the knife news uh, article right here. And the example knife they had up was this very uh, combination. It was the deep red handle. You'll, you'll see this a little later on uh, with the black blade. And I was moved. I love maroon. I just love that burgundy color. And then next to a black blade, to me, those are the, and then I realize, oh, those are my school colors. But it's not that. It's not that. It could be anyone's school colors. And I just love that combination. So when I saw this, I was like, I like the direction Civivi is going with their look. It's simple. It's clean. That tanto shape is gorgeous. You have a really nice uh, straight run here. And then, and then the upward. So you have two very straight edges and an excellent secondary point. Um, I like, okay, so some Tantos trail upwards. I really like that. Like the um, four-inch Voyagers, uh, they, they have a, an upward trailing uh, point and sort of an upward trajectory to the blade itself. And then when you look at the Recon ones, it's straight. And then you look at some blades and there's a there's a curve on the top and a very straight edge. And I like both a lot, but lately I've been into this very straight edge, curved top, and then straight forward edge or slight curve in that forward edge. And uh, it gives you a very nice secondary point. And those secondary points are great for uh, box opening, draw cutting, that kind of thing. But I will warn you, a good friend of mine had a... Um, had the Tanto Recon 1 with that incredible angle right there up here at the front of the Tanto. And he opened so many boxes. He, he was a bartender at the time. He opened up so many boxes that he rounded out that secondary tip and it looked like a drop point. It was actually pretty cool. Uh, but that was through, that was Aus 8 steel. He never sharpened it or he, he didn't maintain it. He just used it, used the hell out of it. And uh, that secondary point became a curve. And, uh, so anyway, looked very cool. So this is the Civivi Brazen. It also comes in uh, Damasteel. Uh, you can get it in uh, they, uh, the Damasteel version has uh, micarta. You can get it in purple. You can get it. In, and I like purple too, though I can't live with a purple knife. I look at them and I fantasize about having them but then when i get them i always kind of quickly move them out or eventually move them out because i love purple it's probably my favorite color but i don't know on a blade handle i don't know for some reason i've been i've been moving them along um i don't know maybe the maroon is a little more fraught because it's closer to red than blue purple's closer to blue it's softer closer to red it's like don't forget what this knife can do you know what i mean all right so Civivi brazen the other civivi um the, there was the riffle of course but the the other one is the cogent in this beautiful color as well now if you look they are they're going for the same thing but they're different batches of g10 you probably can't even see that uh with this camera against that green you're just getting contrast but there is a slight uh color difference uh the the cogent the new button lock which is exquisite is mm, it's a little browner it's a little more like indian red than this i guess you would call it uh but this knife i have been digging 
digging, digging, digging. Uh, I got this one because it's the first Civivi with serrations. I know you're like, well, so <laughs> we hate serrations. Remember, Bob? Uh, yeah, but I don't always hate serrations. I kind of like them sometimes. Uh, and I figured why not? check out the Civivi serrations because they're going to be extra, extra nasty because we know about Civivi. They use thin blade stock. We know that Civivi grinds it way thin to the edge and that it's very, very slicey. So then you take that angle and you add serrations. It makes it even, it's like taking a very, very sharp blade and turning that portion into a chisel. So I have all these little scooped chisels here, uh, and 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 that could get you out of pinch. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, uh, the the real star of the show here is the action. This uh, button lock frame. Uh, I'm sorry, button lock flipper action is outstanding, and just so fidgety and fun to play with. And I know Greg Medford says a real man doesn't fidget, but uh, I don't know. Maybe if he fidgets with a knife, maybe maybe the knife portion, knife aspect of it. Uh, makes it more manly but this is a fun knife to fidget with and it's like uh you know if you if you when you close it if you give it a little bit too much juice it'll bounce back out so so i've kind of learned to sort of go easy on it you know ah oh, i could do that all day and i do and it drives my wife nuts and i gotta say <clears throat> there was a very fraught moment it was actually just yesterday and I nervously pulled this thing out and flipped it. <laughs> and uh, boy, did I get a stabbing look and I was like, God, I'm such a dumbass. Uh, so I put it away and dealt with the situation. Um, but there you go. Great, great fidgety knife and fantastically thin. And that's 14 C 28 N. the, the, the brazen is D two, which is also a perfectly wonderful steel. Uh, if you if you think you need more, I say you need a different tool personally. Uh, but 14C28N, um, I hear from from Jared Neve that that Civivi does it best. They do an awesome job in the heat treat of their 14C28N, which is Sandvik, which is a Swedish steel. I like that detail for some reason; it makes it exotic to me. Um, so uh, last knife that I have here to show you. <laughs> Uh, is also dark red, and uh, we we will see it amongst the lineup coming up. But this is the surprise of the recent time, recent past. This is the Gerber Zilch. Now, you might remember we covered this. Mm, was it on Thursday Night Knives or here? I can't remember, but I remember it was a knife news article announcing this knife. And I, I remember saying, wow, that looks like it's going to cost more than 20 bucks because this is what this costs. I thought the design, just from looking at it, it seemed very refined. I think, I think, okay, I'll be straight up. I was betrayed by Gerber a long time ago. And by betrayed, I mean, I grew up obsessed with a pocket knife that my dad had made by Gerber in the 70s. It was sort of a 70s stylized version, all thin and sleek, of the Buck 110. I love that knife. I love the leather sheath, everything about it. The Gerber symbol, it was like a sword and a stone. I was like, this is amazing. And then as I grew up, they started producing real junk knives. Uh, but, you know, past five years, they've been trying to pull themselves out with interesting stuff. You know, I got to say, like, until you make stuff in America, which they have been doing with some of their fixed blades and a few of their folders, but until you start until you start making things in America with with higher end materials, you're not really going for it. They have been doing that. They could be doing that with this design. This thing is outstanding. This is the Gerber Zilch. It I got this at um, Lowe's, I think, or where did I get it? I got this. Oh, I got this at, uh, I'm sorry. I got this at REI sporting goods. I was trolling around there. I saw this for 20 bucks at REI. REI is expensive. You know, they, they, they charge the premium. So this is, they weren't, they weren't going easy on me by selling me this at, for 20 bucks. So this is a very inexpensive knife and I've had it for about a week and a half now. And the action is superb. I haven't even opened it up. I'm not sure uh, 
what kind of um, what kind of uh, washers it's on, but it's got amazing slow roll and thumb flicking and uh, spidey flicking action. Excellent. And I just did that with my left hand and I'm very impressed with myself, but uh, I'm impressed with this knife too. Um, the, the handle, as you can see this, they call it drab red, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny, uh, but they call this uh, drab red handle is so cheap. It's like a really cheap plastic. It feels cheaper than any FRN, you know, but it's nicely uh, shaped. The the overall profile is nice, and then it's got good texture on it. So it's a it's a passable handle. Now I will say, from where it was molded, it has seams on the top that are a bit sharp. I'm going to sand them down after I do my uh, close up video of this. They have nice standoffs here. I don't know if you can see these. Let's see if I can get them. Very nice standoffs there. But then they do this goofy thing with the molding, these teeth here, uh, as sort of a a, a, a quasi backspacer. To me, that that's just a lint trap. It's just that's all that is. That's just a lint and gunk trap. Uh, so I would get rid of that if I were them and just stick with the really nice standoffs. They're pretty stout, you know, for a cheap knife like this. They're pretty broad and flat standoffs. So, I mean, I think this is going to be a strong knife. It's, this has liners in it. What, what they need to do, okay, and let's move up to the blade. 7CR17MOV, seven, seven seventeen MOV. so, you know, but comes very sharp and strops up very easily. Uh, and, you know, if, if this becomes your main work knife, you'll, you might even want to keep a pocket strop with you if you do a lot of cardboard processing. But it will sharpen up way quick. It is a really nicely shaped blade. To me, it 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 is it is in that scalpel family. I don't know. It's sort of a pointy drop point. Um, it's got an it's got a fuller in it. It's thin. It comes to a very sharp edge. Um, you can even spidey flick it if you want with that fuller. The fuller could be a little deeper for that if you were to use it for that purpose. Okay, what am I saying here? You, look, you have good access to that lock bar and great action, good placement of the thumb stud. This should be Gerber's platform. They should take this and run with it, just like Civivi did with the Elementum and just like uh, uh, just like Boker has done with the Quaken and, you know, you, you keep, keep naming them. But this could be Gerber's new platform. To me, this, if they stepped up the steel... And if they stepped up uh, the handle material, this thing could be in the running for uh, a knife that would compete with the bug out. It's very, it's got a great blade shape. It's got that thinness. It's got that lightness. Um, it's got a great blade shape. This thing could definitely do that. So I'm very, very, very impressed with the Gerber Zilch. Right now it's a $20 knife. Right now it's not, uh, you know, it's not in the greatest materials, but it should. It, it seems like the best it could be in these materials. It's like I tell my girls, when you get that first job and you're shining shoes like I did or washing dishes or whatever, you make sure you're the best dishwasher you can be, you know, and then that means you get to become a sous chef or whatever it is. You get to move. You get to change your job. Uh, it's the same thing with this. You know, if you're going to use 7CR17 MOV and the cheapest FRN on the market, by the way, great pocket clip and placement, um, if you're going to do all that, make it as absolutely awesome as it can be. And I believe that Gerber has done that. And so I am always willing to forgive. I won't forget, but I'm willing to forgive. And I want to see Gerber take the zilch uh, and just explode with it and do a lot of cool things with it and do it in Micarta and S35 and just different stuff like that. All right, I'm going to say that. And and before I wrap up the the, the zilch talk, zilch is also an awesome game italian dice game that i used to play with my grandparents and family uh around this time of year actually it was a big thing at christmas time because we were all together so zilch the name zilch has a has a place in my heart as well all right now let's get to it red handled knives mm. and you're saying bob uh, you know that's kind of a random category of knife to show off but i've noticed it is a growing trend in in my collection what are the growing uh, trends in your collection? I really want to 
I want you to let me know. Leave a comment down below or call the listener line 724-466-4487 and just leave a message and say, hey, Bob, here's a trend. Uh, I'm really going for uh, black G10 and uh, and silver blasted blades. And I'll say, really? 1999 is calling and they want their knives back. But whatever it is, tell me the trends that you're interested in and uh, and let me know. Right now, for me, it's like if I have the option, I'm getting a red handle. And the darker the, the red, the better. We'll get to that. Uh, but here is a very light. This is the lightest on the lightest uh, on the light end of the spectrum for me. Uh, this is my Dirk Pinkerton custom Pical, uh, Pical fixed blade knife. This is a double edged um, beauty here. So as you can see, this handle, <clears throat> so it's a red and orange or a red and a yellow, which from a distance look orange, I guess. But the handle on this blade, th so I this was in the secondary room at Blade Show and it was sitting on Dirk Pinkerton's table. I didn't see him. I mean, I've, I had spoken to him at this point. I didn't see him. I saw this knife from across a crowded room and I made a beeline for it. And uh, part of it was that handle. It was like a clarion call, come to me and then look at my double-edged Pical style blade, almost four inches. You know, it, it just called me and I, and I was like, if anyone else goes near that damn blade before I get there, there's going to be trouble here. And I got there and I greedily picked it up and there was another person there. And I was like, you know, you better back off, buddy. Uh, no, I didn't say that. But I picked this up and I was like, this is perfection. I got to say his blade grinding is perfection. He had a bunch of other knives, many of them um, inspired by historical ethnographic knives jambia he had a jambia jambaya there he had uh some other really really amazing things but he, the, the man can grind a blade but it was this that really caught my eye initially this beautiful cheerful happy red and yellow uh micarta layered micarta on this <laughs> most devastating black coated nitro v double-edged pical blade was just too tasty a, a a contradiction to to pass up and and i just flew to it so anyway uh this was just another another one in the another brick in the wall of beautiful red handled knives gonna put that down here and next this is one that uh i was given a choice uh, after looking for this knife for a long time a good friend of the show, Lavender Pants 86 got in touch with me and said, I'm at River's Edge Cutlery, and they have a bunch of Demcos. They had like six of them, and this was one of them. And he said, I will buy it for you, and then you can pay me back. And we did that right then and there. I was at work. I was in a meeting. It was like uh, I was pretending something intense was going on, <laughs> and something intense was going on. And uh, that was the arranged purchase of this Andrew Demco or Demco Knives. 8020. Such an outstanding knife for so many reasons. Uh, but in this case, we're talking about how beautiful it looks with that deep red handle. I saw that there were um this is actually the 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 golden mean for me in terms of machine ground Demco 8020s because it has the the handle I'm most interested in having, which is this deep, you know, beautiful deep red. It's got the clip point blade, and then it doesn't have the opening hole. When I look at the 8020s with the opening hole, the opening hole seems to reduce the size, the visual size of the blade uh, in comparison to the um, handle. And as you know, uh, when it comes to knives, I'm a superficial guy and looks matter. And uh, so I like, I always liked the non hole version, even though uh, it reduces the ways you can open it and it, it adds weight. I just like it better like this. Uh, but just such a gorgeous, gorgeous example of the type, uh, if you ask me. And that has to do with that red handle. It's very compelling. And to me, this is kind of like close to a blood red. Also, my bastin. We're going to get to that. But blood red, at least uh, speaking as a, someone who did a lot of painting in the past. And, you know, I dabble in it still. And when I retire, I'll do a lot more painting. Uh, blood, getting that blood red color is very, very difficult. It's a, it's a, it's a weird color because it's, I think it's always changing, but I, I could be wrong about that. But this next knife, I think gets close to it because the red color of the G10 next to the black handle, I don't know. 
your eyes put them together and make that sort of blood red color. But here, uh, as you just saw, we have the Civivi Brazen. I'm not going to go off at length about this, but I do must say when I first got it a couple of days ago, it was, you know, reasonably good in terms of action. And I've just been driving around, you know, this has been a car knife and I've been flipping it and, and, uh, this has gotten smooth, like noticeably smooth. It's interesting. Uh, it's like Civivi's come almost broken in. And then like you flip it 50 times and then suddenly it's the smoothest knife you've ever experienced. This is on the way uh, to that. Oh, one thing I just want to show, uh, I think it's cool. I don't have too many knives with this, but this has the internal stop pin embedded, you know, in the blade. And I know that's not a big deal, but whenever I see it, I think it's neat, you know, because I'm used to having the... Uh, seeing the stop bar right there. So there it is. Civivi Brazen also comes in a drop point, but that uh, Tanto blade is what compelled me towards that design. Next up, a knife um, I have mixed emotions about, but it is the uh, uh, Benchmade Proper. And this is in contoured, very nicely contoured red G10. Uh, the thing about this knife, this was an REI purchase, and I got this because I had uh, a bunch of dividend points, and they had come due, and I had to buy something, and then they had this in the cabinet, and I got it. What I really wanted, and they didn't have it, was the micarta version, but in having this for a couple of years now, I've, you know, in that period of time, really fallen for Red G10 and... and um, red micarta, red handle scales. And so this has become a more and more uh, loved knife. This also became much more loved after I took it apart. I took it apart, cleaned it, and, and gave it a little love, put it back together, and it was so much nicer. I mean, it's got kind of a slack and sloppy walk and talk. And, you know, it, it was Benchmade's first slip joint and this is in that first uh, run, I believe, of slip of, of proper. It's not the snappiest, uh, slip jointiest of slip joints. Uh, you know, like the slip joint lovers among us probably don't prize this uh, too much. But there's that jimping I was talking about before. And it is a perfectly, um, well, serviceable and good knife and a very nice design. Actually, it fits well in hand. And that's a great blade shape, I got to say. So just it's just the walk and talk. The action on that knife has always stuck in my craw a little bit, got to say. All right, next up is the SOG Terminus. Now, this was a knife I got for being a uh, um, blade, uh, I'm sorry, a knife rights member. Uh, this was my 2020 donation uh, knife. And Red Terminus XR. I wasn't expecting anything in return. I think it's awesome that, that you get these... Uh, these gifts when you donate to the ultimate steel. And uh, this, this is one of the early XR locks for SOG XR is their bar lock. Uh, that's the axis lock post patent expiration. So everyone's doing a version of it. And uh, this is SOGs. It's the XR. This is an early version of it. And I have a number of other SOG XR locks that are done way better than this one in particular. Uh, I know that a lot of people think the, the uh, have excellent SOG XRs. This one, it never quite felt like, and maybe you can even visually perceive this, but it never quite felt like that bar uh, that locks over the tang of the blade was exactly at 90 degrees to the handle scales. I feel like it's just a little bit off, and you can feel it. When you pull back on it, you can just kind of feel. There's a little grindy resistance. But all that being said, um, it's it's got excellent flipper action, which, you know, is something that is not always um, the case with an XR or, or with a bar or axis style lock. They really got the flipping action down well. And um, I think in the years since this, which was an early XR lock, I think in the years since uh, they've they've gotten it down much, much better. You say in the years since, Bob, 2020 was last year. Well, yeah, but I think this was an earlier model. I think this is an earlier specimen because the other XRs I have are so much better than this. But all that being said, this is a really nice knife design. It's got a great 
profile, that clip point blade is beautiful and also very useful because they grind it down. Even though that's a saber grind, it's really nicely thin back here. Uh, and I haven't used it too much, but I have used it. This has been a desk knife where it's just kind of sat out and done ran random tasks. And then, of course, it's somewhat fidgety. I say somewhat only because that little grinding I feel in the axe in the lock there, XR lock, uh, I don't like so much. All right, next up is uh, has been my EDC of late, my fixed blade EDC. And by EDC, I mean actually every day <laughs> I've been carrying this. I love this thing, the hog tooth knives, uh, EDC tanto. Uh, EDC tanto. I'll show it with the sheath. It's an excellent sheath. You've got that curled over portion for extracting it, pushing against with the thumb which I always love. Um, and you've got discrete carry concept clip that comes on it, which also is my absolute favorite uh, way to carry a fixed blade knife is with these clips. This is a smaller one. It clips just onto the seam of your pants. You can get uh, broader ones that, uh, that go over the belt like this. Uh, but either way, discrete carry concepts are awesome. So I'll remove this sheath. And then this is the blade. I've been showing this off a lot recently because I've been carrying it all the time. Uh, but it's a hollow ground, three and a half inch tanto, just beautifully made. This is 154 cm. Now Matt Chase of Hog Tooth Knives is a uh, is a is a smith, blade smith. Um, but this is one of the knives that he does for you know, kind of like semi well production it's not it's production out of his shop it's 154 cm steel water jetted blanks and then he hollow grinds them he does all the work uh but he gets them water jetted out and he, he'll do a few of them every once in a while and i think it's a great platform i've told him that uh uh you know if he makes a bowie version of this and a warren cliff version of this he will sell at least you know one of each i know that for sure but i think I think it's an excellent, excellent platform because it's an easily carried um, EDC fixed blade, but it does fill the hand. Even if your pinky isn't all the way on, the way that curve works, you can, I mean, for me, it does. I have medium-sized hands. My whole hand fits on there. You have giant mitts. It might come off the back, but it's perfectly shaped for it, encapsulating the whole handle in your hand and then this nicely curved pommel is excellent for in the waistband carry uh, it doesn't really poke your ribs when you're sitting in your car it also doesn't disrupt the love handles or any of that so just an excellent design beautifully made by matt chase handmade up in massachusetts um check him out uh, hogtooth knives on instagram and um uh, you know uh, this was very recent this was a 250 dollar knife and uh, for a handmade, um, in incredible knife like that, that's a great, great price. And it's a one of a kind. Okay, next up, um, speaking of one of a kind, this is my Hinderer XM18 Spanto, which I had reground by Josh at Razor Edge. So it's very, 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 very thin. I mean, like really thin. This is my sharpest folding knife for sure. It's really thin, hollow ground, beautifully flat ground front portion. Let me see if I can. <laughs> there we go. Beautifully ground front por portion. So that makes it one of a kind. But I've had a number of scales on this. Last, uh, I had a scale that was custom made out of the uh, Python micarta. I thought that was cool for a while. And then I was like, this is garish. What am I, like 25 years old now? I'm an old man. I need to do something a little more subtle, a little more becoming of a, of a gent. Uh, so I got this here. <laughs> that was my excuse for buying a new uh, handle scale. This is a red micarta, uh, you know, maroon micarta scale from Hinderer, but it's got the milling in it. That's what I love. So here's the thing about the Hinderers and the aftermarket scales. When you get the, when you get them smooth, I like them for a while, but I always come back to that texture. I love the texture that they mill in their G10 or in their handle scales. You can get that in titanium if you're lucky. Um, but, you know, you can also get them aftermarket in Micarta and G10. So uh, very happy to get this. To me, this completes the knife. Um, I, I love it in this shape. And that's that's another great thing about the Hinderer knives is that you can really customize them to your liking but with all the different hardware and scale materials and, uh, you know, clips and stuff you can get to customize it. 
Um, and if you if you spend the money, you can get them reground, and it makes the blade even better. If you if you like the knives, you know, real thin and cutty. Okay, next up is the Finch knives, Devil's Finger, in stunning red coral micarta. Um, I just love this knife. This again, we have a 154 cm blade. Uh, what is this? Three? It's a little bit over three inches long. Uh, 154 cm that got that beautiful spear point blade you have a continuous belly but it's stretched out over a distance uh the distance of that blade making it you know making that front portion of it a bit like a straight you have that uh, flipper tab that's jimped and very low profile when it's closed uh, which i love because it doesn't you know doesn't get in the way uh, but when you open it and it opens up beautifully because look at where the Look at where it's actually located uh, in relation to the pivot. Pops open. And then you have that jimped platform there that acts like a choil. You can get right up on the blade there. Uh, it's sort of like an inverse choil. Instead of, instead of being cut out, it's protruding. But it's at that great angle with that great jimping. And it works, works really nice. Uh, the handle scale material itself is contoured canvas micarta you can tell canvas from linen linen has a much finer weave canvas has a weave that's uh easy to see like this and feel that's what adds to its grippiness and then you have your burlaps and burlap is like coffee bag or sackcloth and uh that's got a really uh loose weave some people like it some people hate it some people hate it because they know that there's a lot more um epoxy in there to hold that whole thing together uh, i like it i love the look of it this coral red micarta, uh, when they ship it out, they oil it. And if you know anything about micarta, when you oil it, it becomes very brilliant and um, deep in terms of the color. And the white here that we see from the fabric and from the epoxy um, gets drowned out when you when you oil it. And it came like that, and I liked it. It looked, I mean, it was dazzling, stunning, bright red. But I knew that they had oiled it and probably going for the effect of that dazzling. But I like this. I like the I like seeing the different layers and I like the the difference in the white, you know, the whiter color area. It looks to me like wood grain or something evocative of that. So I took a towel and rubbed it off and and got as much off of it as I could. And then eventually it will come back to that, but it'll be in the shape or pattern of where I touch it the most. And then. That's the beauty part about micarta is that it patinas with your use, uh, much like a patinaing uh, metal would. Patinaing. There you go. All right. Next up, we've already seen this, so I won't I won't bloviate too long about this. But the Civivi cogent, love this knife uh, because I don't have any button lock flippers. I know it's 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 a it's a first world crime here, but I have no button lock flippers and have been always curious especially just for this just to while away the hours flipping it and closing it and flipping it and closing it and um i think that this scratches that itch i know the protect malibu i know i need to be all over that but it, it just does not i i don't have it so so maybe maybe if i had it i'd love it but it just doesn't call my name this one you know for for 70 bucks did and it kind of scratches that itch. And it does it very well. It does come with a bit of lock stick. I noticed that on the purple and black version that we gave away last week uh, for the Gentleman Junkie giveaway. It came with some stick. But with this one, I've just been obsessively flipping it. So hopefully that stick goes away soon. So that's the new Civivi Cogent. And as you can see, I got it with that, with the serrations. All right, next up. A beauty and this is a semi-custom this is the bastinelli knives anomaly and it is a collaboration it's one of four collaboration knives that bastion coves of bastinelli knives did with uh doug markaida doug markaida uh you might know him from uh well being a kali legend you also might know him from uh forged in fire the incredibly uh, uh charismatic tester of blades and Kali master. Uh, so he got together with Bastien Cove of Bastinelli. They came up with four 
different blade shapes for this handle. Now, the custom part about this is that, that maroon handle wrap. Um, Bastion posted a picture of this with that wrap, and I, I ordered one right away. I just loved it. I just love the way it looks. Um, ordinarily, this knife, like the other, many other of the sort of uh, karambit style uh, Bastinelli knives, comes without any sort of wrap. It's just sort of a raw metal handle. And the point of that is it makes it incredibly... Um, What's the word? I'm like, concealable. You had you had girth and grip and look at this in cross section. It's like a classic Japanese wrap. It's so cool. But you add girth and uh, and wrapping and stuff, and that adds to how a shirt will grip onto it or how it will print. Um, so they did the four uh, blades. One of them was a uh, forward sweeping classic karambit. One of them was a uh, sort of spade shaped blade. I can't remember what the third one was. And then this was the fourth one, the anomaly, uh, a Pical style tip down edge in beauty. And it's interesting uh, because if you have karambits, if you, if you flip them around, if you do any of that kind of karambit manipulation stuff, which I'm not going to attempt to do here in the confined area with the lights and stuff. But if, if you're used to doing that stuff, just in practicing and, uh, when you have a Pical style, obviously the whole curve and the edge is going in the opposite direction. So everything you're doing is <laughs> if you do everything you do normally with this knife, it's you're going to be hitting them with a with the blunt uh, side of the blade. So uh, beware of that if you're going to get this knife. Um, but it's just a really great tool to have. I am very not enthused about rings, but if I'm going to get a ring, it's going to be a Bastinelli knife. But I've been pretty well convinced uh, that you're likely to really jack up your finger in a, in, a, in a hardcore situation if you're trying to use a knife with a ring. That's just what I've heard from people who know. I don't know. I haven't been in those situations, thank God. All right, next up is, I'm not going to talk about this at all, is the Gerber Zilch. That's one of my red knives, red drab. I just talked about that at length. I absolutely love it and never thought I'd say that about a Gerber again. After the betrayal of 1970. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, next up is the Emerson Elvia. This beauty. I got those scales from Tom Engelson of Blades and Such on Instagram. He's Blades underscore N. That's an N underscore Such. And he specializes in these amazing scales for um, Emerson knives. I have a CQC 13 that he did some natural canvas scales for. And he does amazing work. On the um, on the CQC 13, I had him do a whole bunch of knurling and cross hatch lines and stuff. On this one, I had him do the opposite. I knew that for the Elvia, it had to be this sort of burgundy blood red uh, because of the, I don't know, just makes sense uh, in terms of what the knife is intended for, but also culturally, uh, it's Mexican heritage. That color seems to play prominently in a lot of their art. Uh, contoured nicely from this angle. So just smooth contoured. This is a uh, canvas micarta double. I think this is a double dyed micarta and that's why it's such a deep, deep red, such a great knife. And those scales really, really make it. I rarely get a, cut, a production knife and, and, and immediately think I have to alter this or have this altered. But when I got the LV, I was like, this is such a special knife. I need to I need to tweak this and make it mine. And I did. And Tom Engelson does an awesome job. We have a deep cut conversation where we talk about making blade scales uh, or knife scales. Check it out. It's in one of the playlists. Uh, next up is the Finch 1929. And this red handled knife comes with a unusual bone. This is called Night Crawler ribbed night crawler bone i believe so if you look at the ribbing that's carved into the scale it's evocative of the ribbing on a night crawler uh you know worm and then if you look at the red bone and the way it's dyed itself and you look at how it's dark in some spots and light in some other spots uh it really <laughs> looks like the fleshy translucence of a worm. I think they nailed it. I think it's the perfect name for that, for that 
color. Uh, it's such a great knife. Talk about a scalpel blade. I, I mentioned before one of the knives, the Zilch has a sort of a scalpeline blade. Well, this one, it's even shaped a bit like a scalpel. Um, very thin. This is 154 cm. It's like a, it's a pretty thin blade stock, but I mean, it's a broad enough blade at three quarters of an inch from from clip to to belly that it's very thin behind the edge and slicey and just this would make a well i shouldn't say that i'm not a surgeon <laughs> i was about to say this would make a great field scalpel and i don't know what i'm talking about but you can you can you can get very nice clean cuts with this knife so i really really like it and i will stop pretending i'm a surgeon all right two more this one is the darkest of the dark red uh, knives in my collection here. And this is a custom knife by Ron Steele Jr., uh, who we had on the podcast uh, not too long ago. And uh, he is a custom fixed blade knife maker out of California. And uh, Tier 1, Justin from Tier 1, uh, loaned me a couple of knives he had Ron Steele make for him. I fell in love with them, so I ordered this. This is his Prime model. The Prime model comes in <clears throat> this original drop point shape, comes in a beautiful clip point, which I'd like to get at some point. And I think he's doing now a worn cliff or sheep's foot kind of uh, blade on this on this platform as well. But this is the original. And uh, I had on loan to me a drop point and a clip point. Fell in love with them both. Both I actually fell in love with the clip point even more. But when I ordered, I decided on this because... It is a really unique drop point shape, and I rarely, you'll hear me say that, rarely. <laughs> I just, drop points are the least, uh, you know, interesting to me, but I really liked the shape, and I thought it was just ripe for sharpening that top edge. So uh, Ron obliged. He made me a double-edged version of his drop point prime, and he asked about handles. He really specializes in exquisite handles. And I specialize in being somewhat boring. <laughs> so uh, I was like, I just want, I want like maroon linen micarta. And he's like, but, but, but can I do something else? I'm like, yeah, of course, you know, do, do what comes, you know, I want it pretty plain, but yeah, do what moves you. And so he did this, um, these cool spacers in here, G10 gray, black and gray g10 spacers on this just gorgeous deep 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 maroon micarta next to that black blade that black double-edged blade this thing is just a fierce i love this knife and uh the fact that it was made custom for me means a lot and it didn't break the bank and it's a cool new maker making it there is a whole world of great knives custom one-of-a-kind knives waiting just for you out there from new makers that's the exciting thing about this hobby you know just get yourself some instagram and find someone you like uh next up and last up is the reddest of the red knives i mean this is a really red knife this is from the newfoundland knife company and this is the ranger knife uh, this was a gift from jonathan styles uh the man who heads up this company who lives a life of adventure. If you, if you follow him, looks like he's got, has a great time living in Newfoundland, all those beautiful vistas and um, landscapes to ride your motorcycle through and all the knife making he does. And this is one that he uh, made and then had prototyped by millet. So this is a millet made knife and it's got uh, D2 steel, very nice and broad, pretty thin uh, D2 steel. I'm going to I'm going to see if I can read my calipers. I'll tell you how thin it is. Uh, will I? Yeah, 964th of an inch thick. All right, I got to learn how to read this thing. All right, 964th of an inch thick there. Uh you got this nice um jimped thumb ramp which you think on an outdoor knife what do you need a thumb ramp for? But you might need to thrust this into something, be it a bar or be it a uh, you know a person and that thumb ramp is a good thing for the thrust and you have this tip that is in line with the, the, the top of the spine um so that gives it a nice belly here and you get a good straight away here this is an excellent outdoor knife i used it uh, this past summer for some vine vine stuff vine clearing you can see a little bit of the marring in the um cerakote but it's held up very very nicely I say held up. I mean, it's not like I've used this a ton, 
but I've taken it out and, and bashed it around a bit in the back. And it does really great. And I have to believe it's because of that super thin uh, grind on that relatively thin steel. But look at that red handle. Is that a red handle to beat the band? It's a uh, it's a composite wood, uh, black wood and red wood layered and then contoured. And it feels it feels so nice in hand and it looks gorgeous, too. Uh, the red Cerakote, honestly, has grown on me. At first, I was like, oh, a red knife. And uh, but it was a gift. And I was like, this is a cool gift. And then I used it. And I was like, oh, this is a great knife. And then if I drop it, I can find it. Uh, one interesting thing about this knife, I always the one misstep, I should say, with this knife. Uh, there's a lanyard hole here, but there should be one here, I think, so that uh, you can make that sort of D ring lanyard or have a lanyard that goes over the back or just give you the option for having a lanyard in the back. Uh, because it is an outdoor knife, I kind of feel like you should have that. <sighs> All right, those have been my 15 red-handled knives. Um, I'm not going to rattle them all off, but everything from Civivi to uh, Emerson to some uh, some customs to some finches. I love these deep red knives. Uh, I, I think that that is what I'm... <laughs> I think that's what I'm uh, uh, home, honing in on. So as my collection grows, as it gets, as it grows and as it refines, and as I get more and more custom things or things that I have more choice on, handle material and color, I think I'm just going to be seeing a lot more of that. And I don't want to be a one-trick pony. I don't be a, one of these people who like everything is red because that's weird, um, or it can be anyway. Um, but in any case, uh, keep your eye out. I'm sure there are more red knives in my near future. And who knows, maybe some will come for Christmas. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Uh, if you celebrate Christmas, Merry, Merry Christmas. Don't forget what the whole holiday is about. Yes, gift giving is a great, great part of it. But there's also a lot more to it. And then those of you who don't celebrate Christmas, enjoy the season. You know, it's nice to have people around you all cheery. Uh, isn't it? <laughs> so it's a good time for everyone. Uh, please let the holiday spirit touch your heart and generate and bloviate out into the world. Uh, that was awful. All right. So uh, be sure to check us out here on on um, on uh, Thursday night for Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we we do have a, 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 a truncated schedule for the holidays, uh, but we'll keep you up to date with that. All right. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco, who has spoken too long, saying until next time, people, please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Knife Junkie.